The MI-24 helicopters in War Thunder. Monsters of the battlefield. The iconic Cold War helicopters. They call it Hind, Crocodile, or even a flying BMP. Whatever you like to call it, you cannot deny the fact that this thing is one of the heavy sumo fighters of the helicopter world, being a troop transport and a helicopter gunship all at the same time. But how can you play them in War Thunder? Are they really good at their given role? And most importantly, are they worth it? Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Bob Dickinson and welcome to another War Thunder review. Today, we will be looking at the MI-24 series of helicopters. From the basic, to the most modern variant. The US Army's troop transport helicopters generally operated with cover from assault helicopters. This came into an effect during the Vietnam War. Mikhail Leontievich Mill saw that and came to the conclusion that a well-armed and armored helicopter was required to increase the mobility of the Soviet Army, like a flying armored car, or in the future they called it the flying BMP. The engineers at the Mill Design Bureau already had considerable experience in developing helicopters and turning transport helicopters into gunships. One prime example is this miserable bastard. The military officials gave the project a green light, and the designers got to work. There are three versions of the MI-24 helicopters in the game. The early model, which is the MI-24A, and the semi-modern models, which includes the MI-24D, V, P, and the export German P, and the premium German P variants. And finally, the fully modernized variant, which is the MI-35. There are some minor differences between them, but we will get into them later. For now, let's analyze what type of helicopter we're dealing with. Welcome to the Armor and Modular Protection Analysis, where we basically analyze the armors and modules inside of a vehicle. Today's vehicles are the MI-24 series of helicopters. They generally have the same placements for their modules, so we're going to have MI-24A and D variants as the examples. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the crew. This is the reason why I included two helicopters in this segment because the cockpit of the MI-24A has something like a greenhouse-looking structure. The pilot is on the far left side of the cockpit, while the weapon system officer, or the gunner, is in the front center of the cockpit. The rest of the variants, such as the MI-24D, have a tandem cockpit. In this case, the pilot is on the back, and the gunner is in front of the pilot. Depending on the model, the crew has CCIP on various weapons that they can carry. For example, the MI-24A has CCIP on its cannons and rockets, but not on its bombs. It has optics with 10x zoom with an SPI. The rest of the models are more modernized, and not only have CCIP on their side-mounted guns, but also have CCIP on their dumb bombs, countermeasures, IRCMs, NVDs, and additional RWR as well. It is only when MI-35 starts showing some major upgrades, with a gray thermosight, 73 times zoom optics, and the IRSD auto tracker. All of the MI-24 helicopters have four self-sealing fuel tank modules, with neutral gas pressurization system, with these fuel presets. The fuel options are generally limited, but still, one hour of fuel can do a lot for you. The engines that these helicopters use, Klimov TV-3117V, with 2100 horsepower. The MI-35 uses two Klimov VK-2500-2 with 100 extra horsepower compared to the previous engine. All variants of the MI-24s, except for the A and D, also feature the Hover IR Suppressor System, or HIRSS. This module dissipates the flow of hot exhaust gases, reducing the likelihood of capture by IR-guided missiles. Even when you're set on fire, I'm sure that the fire extinguisher will be a good friend. At the end, you have the oil cooling systems, transmissions, traction of the control surfaces, and prop shafts. The guns that they use are quite very from model to model. The A model uses a 12.7mm machine gun, also seen on the MI4AV, with 900 rounds. The D and the V models use the 12.7mm Yak B machine gun, with a chin turret and 1470 rounds, while all the P variants in War Thunder use a fixed GSH-32K cannon with 250 rounds, same gun that was installed on the Su-25. The MI-35 pushes it to the limit, with a turret-mounted GSH-23L with 450 rounds. Also, all of the MI-24 helicopters can mount four GSH-23 cannon pods. <laughs> 
The offensive armaments are generally the same with some minor differences here and there, but they get better once you progress further into the tech tree. Let's introduce all the offensive armaments that these helicopters carry. The first unusual fact about the Soviet helicopters, with the exception of the Mi-28N, Mi-35M, and the K-29, is that all of these Soviet or Russian helicopters are able to carry 250 and 500 kilogram bombs. Yes, the same bombs that were originally found on the Soviet aircraft such as the Su-25 and the Su-22M3. The Mel family of helicopters are no exception to this, all except for the Mi-35. Conventional bombs aside, let's have a look at the rockets. The S-5K. This is the first rocket pod you use on the Soviet helicopters. The early helicopters such as the Mi-4AV, Mi-24A and D. With low explosive mass of half a kilogram per rocket and low penetration of 150 millimeters, you really can't go anywhere. But here's the catch. Every pod of S5K has 32 rockets. Four pods of them will be 128 rockets total. Really nice when it comes to quantity, but lackluster at quality. S8KO. This one is used on most of the late Soviet helicopters, such as the K-50s and Mi-28s. This type of rocket is also used on the Mi-35, Mi-24V, P, and the Export P variants. These rockets will be your meat and potatoes once you get these stock Soviet helicopters. With an explosive mass and penetration better than the Hydro rockets, and healthy amount of rockets per pod, your only issue might be amount of distance they have to the center fuselage and rocket ballistic indicator. Pretty good rocket pods in my opinion. The S-24s with HE warhead are basically glorified FAB-50s. Given a directed opportunity, you can deal a hefty amount of damage to enemy ground units. But on the other hand, you get one on each pod, which will be a massive insult to the quantity department. They are used on the Mi-24V, P, and D series. Sadly, the export variants don't have this rocket. S-13OF. The S-13s are high explosive rockets with low quantity, but great explosive mass. These guys have low penetration and are only available on the Mi-35. The air-to-air -air missiles that the Mi-24s carry are quite nice, and some are not that good at their intended role. With the first example being the R-60s. Really nice missiles, but at the same time very limiting when you realize that the R-60s are easily avoidable by flares, and it can lock on rear aspect only. The fact that you have to put your nose on the aircraft to lock the enemy air target, with this much of a bad mobility, it's not gonna let you have a fun time. Remember, it's not a bad missile, it's just that it's not really effective on this helicopter. These missiles are installed on both 1 and 2 per pod, on Mi-24V, P, and Export P variants. The R-60Ms and R-60MKs are somewhat better. They eat less flares and they are all aspects, though their lock range is still really weird and you still have to use your mobility to point your nose at the enemy aircraft. These missiles are also installed on both 1 and 2 per pod, on Mi-24V, P, and Export P variants. IGLA missiles are generally seen on the Mi-35, 8 installed on the outer pods, though their usage is still pretty weird. It has a small locking circle, and locking targets with this guy on the Mi-35 is gonna be even harder. They pull only 10 Gs, but their lock range is pretty good. Sometimes they explode, sometimes they don't, sometimes the flight path is a hit or miss. Overall, not really that great. But hey, if it's there, why not use it? Now let's get on with the ATGMs. Well, the first ATGM you will get is the 9M17M Falanga missiles. These guys are really good compared to the SS-11s. They have a better penetration and speed, better explosive mass and range, and generally a good starter ATGM. You can find this missile on the Mi-24A, Mi-24D, and the Mi-4AV. The next missile is the 9M114 Sturm. The Sturms are better than tow missiles in every single aspect except for the penetration. The mobility and the range are through the roof. The only two weaknesses I found was that it lacks penetration, and their quantity per pod on the Mi-24 helis are quite low. With the exception of the Mi-35M being able to carry four or eight of them in only one pod. This ATGM is found on the Mi-24V, P, Export P, and the Mi-35M variants. The next one is the 9M120 Ataka. Imagine the Sturm missiles, but then you improve the penetration, a bit of general mobility, range, and lethality. And then you get the Ataka. This ATGM is only seen on the Mi-35A with four or eight missiles in one pod. Now, armaments aside, how does the Mi-24 helicopters perform regarding their mobility? To be honest, 
they all behave the same. I mean, yeah, sure thing, maybe the MI-24A and MI-35 might not be the same due to their weight and their armaments, but they all behave the same. They're all really heavy, incredibly slow to maneuver, and when I'm saying that, I'm comparing it to other helicopters such as AH-1F, UH-1B, BO-105, Z-9Ws, Apaches, etc. The pitch control is really slow. The yaw control is decent, but the roll rate is even slower. But I really have to say, the responsiveness is much better than the MI-4AV. Aiming fixed guns and air-to-air -air missiles can be a problem, since these guys are really slow and don't like rapid maneuvers. And speaking of rapid movements, these guys have a tiny issue of stalling out their engines. Not because of their engines being bad or anything, it's just the fact that this thing weights 12 tons at maximum capacity. And being 12 tons as a helicopter is nothing new. It's just that the helicopter itself is not designed to be as mobile as an Apache. The sheer size of this thing is absolutely massive, and the rotor blades are even bigger. It carries a lot of heavy armaments, prime example being the 500 kilogram bombs. So please do not expect a lot from the Mi-24 helicopters when it comes to their mobility. On the other hand, their speed is absolutely incredible. The starter Mi-24A is famous for dominating bases at lower BR heli PVE. Also, have you noticed that this helicopter is falling on one side when you look at it from the front? Well, that's not a design flaw it's a feature. You see, conventional helicopters never go straight forward. They either go forward, slightly to the right, or forward, slightly to the left. And the reason why they go either right or left is the direction the main rotor blades are turning. American helicopter blades go counterclockwise, while most of the European and Soviet helicopter blades turn clockwise. Please note, in the most simplified term, the main cause of this is that without the tail rotor, the helicopter will spin violently, because there is no counter to the main rotor blades. And even if you have the tail rotor, this little guy cannot cancel this big guy all the way through. The torque and the airflow are still there. This is the same reason why when you go to max speed with a helicopter and try to pull up the flight stick as hard as you can, the helicopter will bank into either left or right direction, again, depending on the blade's direction. So there are two solutions for this. Either you the coaxial rotors to cancel each other completely, like the V-22 Osprey and the K-50, or you could tilt this structure slightly to cancel that movement. The designers knew this and chose the second option. This is why you see the AH-64 going slightly to the right while the Mi-24 does not even acknowledge it. Overall, the Mi-24's mobility is not good. Do not rely on it. Instead, rely on its top speed and its armaments. Welcome to the final verdict. In this section of the video, I'm going to go through the grind experience of the Mi-24 helicopters and tell you which one of them are worth it or not, and how they work in ground RB and heli PVE. The Mi-24A. The Mi-24A is a really good start to experience how most of the Soviet helicopters feel like. In ground RB, the rockets are not that great, but once we get the ATGMs, it will be better, once you unlock the Falangas at rank 2 modifications. The Mi-24A is a much more pleasant upgrade compared to the Mi-4AV. The Mi-4AV had the worst mobility in helicopters, or hell, the worst air unit mobility in this goddamn game. Hell, even the BV-238 felt better. It was slow, and it was really bad at responding inputs. And the armaments were somewhat lackluster. But most of these issues are solved in the Mi-24A. It is still hard to maneuver, don't get me wrong, but this thing can pull out of stalls much more easily. And the playstyle will go harder once you get into higher BRs. But again, your armaments will be better as well. The Mi-24A is the second best helicopter in Heli PVE starter matchmaking. The first place podium goes to the Mi-24D. It is because it has superior top speed, superior armaments, such as Falanga, the 500 kg bombs, etc. Though the distance between the CCIP and the lackluster S5K rockets will force you to be a much more accurate player. But hey, thankfully you have great amount of rockets with CCIP, and you can practice firing your shots all you want. Verdict? Get this vehicle and spade the hell out of it. All the Mi-24s behave the same. It may not shine in ground RP, but it will be incredible in heli PVE. If you actually like this helicopter, I'm pretty sure that you're gonna like the other ones as well. Mi-24V The Mi-24V is a major improvement when it comes to its armaments. It has still behaved the same regarding its mobility, but you get a much more appealing cockpit with incredible amount of protection. You have a rotary cannon that can help you quite a lot, though it overheats really quick. You have new toys to play around with. The improved Sturm and the S8KO alongside the R60 series of air-to-air -air missiles will be a much more interesting experience. In heli PVE, it's a bit of a hit or miss. Your Mi-24 is now at the top tier heli PVE matchmaking. 
This means that the SPAAs are much more terrifying to work around with. That, alongside your hungry and terrifyingly powerful teammates, such as the K-50s and Apaches, will make your MI-24 grind a little bit too painful, especially when you try to get the ATGMs. This is a general problem with the MI-24 helis in top tier. They are still fast, but when you're stuck, it will not be easy to get kills without the help of a teammate, or dumping rockets, hoping you don't get a single SPAA kill. Get it, and spate the hell out of it if possible. This MI-24 is a really good one. This is one of the best Heinz to have out there, the MI-24D. The MI-24D is essentially the same as the MI-24V, but having the armament preset and battle rating of MI-24A. If you got the opportunity to purchase the helicopter, you can pick it up, but please, play and spade the MI-28 first and see if you like the playstyle then purchase the MI-24D. The next one is the MI-24P. Now, I really gotta say, in the Soviet heli tree, this is what we call Gaijin, please stop taking the piss syndrome. The MI-24P is the exact same as the MI-24V. Just the fact that the main gun has changed from this to this. To my personal opinion, this does not actually worth 380,000 RP with 1 million SL and ignoring the other standings as well. The fact that you're still in this battle rating without any kind of thermals whatsoever is quite alarming. You still have your chaps and flares and HIRSS, but the real question is that, is this really worth your time while the previous helicopter had all the same features except for the changed gun? Final verdict, get it, but don't spit it if you want to rush to the next helicopter. If you're an MI-24 enthusiast, then go for it at all costs. Personally, I don't really think that a GSH-30 is gonna worth all that trouble over again. The MI-35 is the next helicopter that leads to the MI-28 series of helicopters. It is the most modern MI-24 you can possibly see as of this date. You're the same battle rating as the K-50s, yet you still use Saklos Ataka missiles, instead of the laser-guided ones. Yes, you can carry a Tiglas, but you're still pretty sponsored by BBC Russia, or as I would like to call the Russian Navy. But yeah, I think this one is actually worth it, because it has thermals this time, and it has a non-retractable landing gear. You can also go and sell your soul to the devil and purchase the K-29. Much less painful to grind things with. The German Mi-24P and the HFS-80. The German Mi-24P is worth the grind. This will be an interesting experience for most of the German heli players who play things such as the Messerschmitt Volko Blum BO-105s, and never touch the Soviet heli tree. The BO-105s are extremely maneuverable, but they carry less armaments and have a slower top speed. The Mi-24P is the exact opposite of this. If you want to play the East German Premium helicopter, I would recommend you to play the Tech Tree version of it first to see if you like it. And ask yourself this simple question. Is this helicopter worth it over G-Lynx or K-50 or Z-19E or another Apache? You have your own reason to say yes or no, but for me, the Mi-24P HFS-80 is an icon of history that was slowly faded away in the history archives. Playing this in the test drive always hits me different, like the German IL-2. Not the texture version, though the stock grind totally takes a piss on the historical mood. For the texture version, yes, absolutely get it. But for the Mi-24P Premium, consider it. Now, before I finish this video, I just wanted to thank my friend Flogger, or Fluga, for creating this incredible drawing of the Mi-24. The processing of this design took a lot of his time, going through several physical archive documents from his local museum and recreating the entire drawing with his own hands, ground up. And the final results ended up to be a fantastic design that was exactly the same as the in-game model when it came to details. And the thing is that this guy does more than the Mi-24, and the similar projects that he did are absolutely incredible as well. My most favorite being the F-104 Starfighter. So check out his Instagram page at planes underscore drawings underscore extravaganza. Link to his page will be also in the description down below. And again, Flogger, thank you so much for the design. It was absolutely incredible to collaborate with you, man. Totally amazing. The Mi-24 Hind. One of the best, well-designed, iconic, revolutionary, and fascinating helicopters of all time. This machine is still in service of some countries until this day, and won't be retired anytime soon. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, you can always like and subscribe. Dislike it if you dislike it. This is me, Bob Dickinson, signing out.